So we've been here for nearly two weeks and it's at this point in our project that I like to say we've got just three days to find out. And we really have. It's hotting up in this trench, we're getting features right at the bottom. It's hotting up in the earthworks field. We found a button coming out of an earthwork bank yesterday and it's hotting up over in trench one as well. So it's all going off. And here, we're gonna get a full photogrammetry survey of that wall to try and understand the relationship to the drain that's coming through. Can't wait. So we're here today with uh, the infamous Paul Blinkhorn. Probably doesn't need any introduction from me, just a quick rundown. He's a medieval pottery specialist and an excellent, excellent beer drinking buddy. I can vouch for that for sure. But can you tell us a little bit about some of the ceramics that we've been finding here? Sure, I mean most of the pottery coming from here is, is late medieval because this place is a 14th century foundation, so that's what you'd expect. And the local late medieval pottery is fairly uniform and unexciting. Um, but of course we're right by the coast and the East Anglian coast in the medieval period there was ports just all the way around it and a massive amount of cross-channel trade. And we're starting to see some of the products of that trade now. There's a Dutch, either it's probably like a cauldron with three little feet and a couple of handles on it called a grappa, um, which is, you find quite a few of them up and down the East Coast. There's a massive trade coming backwards and forwards and we've got this little collection of Dutch cooking pottery that turned up yesterday and there's German drinking pottery uh, and what I think is a shared of a French flask as well. So. Um, it's always good to see them. It's what you'd expect. I mean, yeah. Ipswich is just down the coast, which was an incredibly important port in the medieval period, and Dunwich isn't that far away, and was also massively important, and this is a, a very wealthy place in the medieval period, so you would have expected it to be attracting trade, and clearly from the finds we're starting to get it was. So, um, are we getting any other evidence of trade apart from the ceramics that we've been looking at? Yeah, I was just having a, a little rummage about in the in the trays around where they're doing sieving for the environmental samples, and there's chunks of German Niedermendig lava quern. These are basically hand mills or there can be large millstones as well. I mean they're, they're a staple of North Sea trade from Roman times onwards. They're quarrying them in the Rhineland, they're coming down the Rhine, then out into the into the North Sea cycle. They may have even been using them as ballast and then selling them when they've got to <laughs> where they were going. So again it's a nice thing to see. It's what you'd expect yeah. to see but it's still nice to see it. So another link in the trade. You know? <laughs> Okay, so last time we were down in Trench 9, we found a nice copper alloy jetton. Um, so now we've actually got a few more uh, nice little shiny finds. So we've got another copper alloy object, not sure what that is. And this morning we also managed to pull out a really nice um, post medieval cosmetic spoon. So a tiny little thing around about that big. Um, so we've carried on going down and we have actually managed to hit some um, undisturbed archaeology and we have, we've just been excavating a pit and we've actually managed to hit the bottom of it. Fine, we'll hit the we've bottom, got, we've got natural people. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've got the full sequence of events here. So now it's just a case of taking out what we think is the linear or another pit, uh, recording it all, and hopefully we can find some more goodies at the bottom. So we're in Trench 10, where we've been taking down the bank on the south of the ditch that we have here. On the very surface, we had lots of finds coming up in a really dark layer. So we were expecting this to be a really productive area. But as we went through that, we hit this really thick, hard clay, which is really difficult to get through and quite similar to the natural, probably because it's upcast from the ditch. Very few inclusions in it, as it was just turned over as they were doing it and it was a real <laughs> effort to get through that. But now we're through it and onto this chalk layer, which looks like it might have some features cut into it. So we're stringing them out now and we're gonna dig them out and see what they've got in them. Okay, it's day 10. This is um, trench 11 and we're finished in here now. All we've got to do is do the recording, last we'll clean up and then Adam's gonna come over later and do the photogrammetry of the whole trench. But yeah, that's it. No more work to be done. I'm going to miss it, but it's been good to me. So we're over here in the Western Fields, uh, Trench 13. We've uh, got a ditch here. It's uh, probably natural. We've got two fills. The upper fill is probably man-made. We've got some Roman pot coming out of that. And over in Trench 12, 
uh, we, uh, we investigated that and we figured out it's probably natural as well. Okay, we're over here at the wet serve today. I'm uh, being allocated to wet serving and luckily uh, Dick Ventures old friend Mikey B is here to help me. So Mike, explain to me what we're doing. We're getting deja vu. I think I remember <laughs> standing at this tank with you about, you about a year ago yeah, yeah, doing yeah. exactly the same thing. Um, yeah, we're, we're going through the, the bulk samples that have been taken in the trenches. We're looking for micro artifacts, any environmental evidence. If there's any charred seeds or bits of charcoal, they come out through the, uh, the light fraction here. They float on the top of the water and we catch them in a sieve. And then if there's any treasure, James has been finding all the treasure, so we're, <laughs> we're hoping maybe for a gold coin in here or something to excite us. So it's lovely to be back. Uh, I'm enjoying the flotation sieving this morning and then hoping to spend a bit of time in the trenches this afternoon and hopefully get to grips with the digital dig system, which sounds really exciting. So we're in the last few hours of our day on Friday. Um, there's still tons of action in the trenches. Adam Stanford is doing his photography masterclass and they're finishing up the last few bits of the photogrammetry in the trenches. We've got a big group from the HLF here. Raksh is headed back out to the trenches to have a real whack at it with the Maddox and take that layer right down. We're gonna be troweling that back, cleaning it up. There's so much that's gonna happen between now and the next time that we see you guys. I can't even like keep it all straight in my head. The important thing is, finds are still coming up. We've had several absolutely special, special things come out of the trenches today. We're gonna to get those cleaned up, have a look at them, get them on the digital dig team system. And although this is gonna be the end of the video for a couple of days, we're gonna be keeping you posted through the digital dig team system as things happen all throughout the weekend. Check back in next week and we'll have a final video update for you with a wrap up from Raksha, Brendan and myself on what has really happened here across the last couple of weeks. And keep watching on Digital Dig Team. See you there. <laughs>